Chippy. You good boy. Check out the view, guys. It was a pretty good night. It wasn't that cold. It wasn't that cold, was it, buddy? No. It was all right. But the wind, oh my god, because I'm on like the top of a mountain. The wind is just rocking the van back and forth. Eventually, I just kind of treated it like a cradle and fell asleep. But if you open one of the doors, it like nearly tears the door right off. It's just gusts of wind just pick up stuff and throw it around. So outside's a bit interesting, but in here it's nice. And the view spectacular. And the champs, he's pretty spectacular too. You enjoying the view, buddy? Look at all that, eh? Beautiful. There's some days where I feel like I'm sacrificing something, you know, living in a tiny little van, and then there's other days where I feel like it's just so luxurious. But check this out. I'm editing some photos. I've got my uh, TV shows going here on the tablet. I'm making myself a delicious breakfast. The furnace is going. And the view out my windows is just spectacular. This van is part of it, like, it, it took a long time to get to this point where it's all perfect, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it today. <laughs> and then I, I just said that so something's gonna break down, but you know, today, right now, right this instant, everything is great. Oh, yowch. So it's been a month I've been on the road and I've spent $2,000 exactly. Now of that $2,000, I think about $1,300 went just to gasoline or maybe $1,200, something like that. The rest went to food expenses. I only spent, I think, 80 bucks on the van itself just doing uh, oil change and yeah, not, I didn't really buy much for the van. Just like minor repairs and stuff that I mostly did myself. Uh, I will be buying new brake rotors, pads, and possibly tires soon, so that'll be pretty pricey next month. But I won't be driving as much, so maybe it'll balance out, hopefully. Anyway, yeah, I figured the budget was $2,200 a month. I don't think that this month is that far off. I, I It's safe to say that if I traveled, like, a lot less, like, I, I drove 7,000 kilometers already. Or, well, no, uh, 8,000 kilometers already. Um, this month, so that uh, that certainly puts puts a, a higher price on on it. You know, if I traveled less, it would be a lot uh, less expensive. But now that I'm out in the desert, I'll probably be clocking less miles than I usually do. So hopefully, it'll be a bit cheaper. Anyway, uh, but this has brought on another problem where I tried to get money from American banks. I don't know if this is like across America entirely, but every bank I've gone into across America always has like 80s technology. It's always super, super retro. Um, and because of this, I always have a really difficult time. And it's not to do with any chain. You, can, you can't suggest anything because I've gone to some chains that are like, no, no way I'm going to that one. And I'll go to the same, uh, same chain, different location, and they have no problem at all. Um, there's no consistency. But basically, what it comes down to is you guys have loads of drive-through ATMs and not much else. Like, if you actually go into a location, they don't have anything there. And, like, they need my passport and they need all this other information, firm handshakes. You know, like, there's all the technology I'm used to having in Canada, non-existent. And, in, and when I went over to Europe, same kind of thing. It was, like, modern banks, you know, no problems. Something about American banks, man. You guys are weird just old school maybe it's just because there's so many of them that it takes so long for you guys to like upgrade them and bring them into the 21st century that uh there's just too many locations for there's too much inertia who knows anyway i'm running out of money and i like to pay with everything in cash because it's cheaper in america to do that plus they service charge the hell out of my account if i don't so i gotta figure that out i gotta get some cash because i need to buy some stuff like gas Welcome to Arizona. I'm actually gonna park not far from where I was last night. Um, but you know, I've been camping on my own this whole time, right? And uh, 
I had someone reach out and they were pretty close by, so I figured, hey, why not? Let's spend a night uh, hanging out with some other folks. Joe's his name, and he's got this nice spot here on BLM land, so uh, he's gonna show me where it's at. I mean, he's meeting me in the parking lot right now because apparently it's a little confusing getting to where he's at. As it always is with BLM. I don't know why, but it's always a little confusing. Signs are difficult. I mean, I shouldn't complain. I mean, compared to Canadians, we've got Crown Land. There are no signs, no roads, no nothing to tell you you're on Crown Land. So, I mean, comparatively, BLM's pretty nice. Pretty easy. There's my hero. Here he comes flying in. Hey buddy! Where's the good parking at? Uh, just a little ways. Well, I met up with Tammy and I met up with Joe and Joe's taking me in his truck and we're way off road right now. This is fun. And we're gonna go see the sparkling, the sparkling mountain? Sparkle mountain. Sparkle mountain! Sparkle mountain! Sparkle mountain. What, what was that one with the horses, the unicorns? Oh. It's like Sparkle mountain, Charlie. Sparkle mountain. So there's actually gypsum crystals and in the sunlight, which is not too sunny today, but you can kind of see it, it sparkles. It's really soft, it's just, I mean, it's gypsum, talcum. It kind of looks like the parking lots in Vanier in Ottawa, where the neighborhood's a little rough and the windows have been broken into so many times that they're just like sparkle <laughs> all along the ground. This is nature's ghetto. See, I thought huh. it was like one of those pterodactyl situations where you pronounce it wrong or something, and a lot of people pronounce it weird. So petroglyphs are tacked in, yeah, see and hieroglyphs are painted in. Yeah, how, it, how they indented So we're them. seeing petroglyphs today. on you. Tammy and Joe also have two awesome dogs. Belle and Davy are these big hunting dogs and they're just giving Champ a run for his money. Champ is uh, really showing his age today. He's not fast enough to keep up with these young chickens. They're fun dogs. Oh, oh, come So we're having steak tonight, guys. I'm in spoiled hard. A steak cooked in a smoker, which is be a first time for me. I've never eaten anything out of a smoker, so should be fun. If they weren't spoiling me already with the steak, they actually got all dressed chips. You know how to make a guy feel homely, eh? Like I feel like I'm at oh, this is so great! Catch oh. 